Welcome to Gospel Preaching, a presentation of Gospel Time Ministries Incorporated. I'm Dave Rigg, coming your way from my home about six miles north of Albion, Illinois. On this Mother's Day, the text that I'm going to be preaching from today comes from the Old Testament book of 1 Kings, chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4, and then verses 10 through 19. New King James translation of the original Hebrew text. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. Now the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn, that the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, he said, You shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Now we skip down to verse 10. So David rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. The period that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. Seven years he reigned in Hebron, and in Jerusalem he reigned 33 years. Then Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his kingdom was firmly established. Now Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. So she said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. Moreover, he said, I have something to say to you. And she said, Say it. Then he said, You know that the kingdom was mine, and all Israel had set their expectations on me that I should reign. However, the kingdom has been turned over and has become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord. Now I ask one petition of you. Do not deny me. And she said to him, Say it. Then he said, Please speak to King Solomon, for he will not refuse you, that he may give me Abishag the Shunammite as wife. So Bathsheba said, Very well, I will speak for you to the king. Verse 19, Bathsheba therefore went to King Solomon to speak to him for Adonijah. Now, here's the part that we're focusing on today. And the king rose up to meet her and bowed down to her and sat down on his throne and had a throne set for the king's mother. So she sat at his right hand. Would you pause just a moment with me for a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask for your blessing on the reading of the Holy Word. And I pray, Lord, that here on this Mother's Day, you will bless all the mothers who watch this video today. And Lord, that may each mother get something from this. But not only the mothers, all the children, all the grandchildren might also get something from this message as to how they should treat mom or grandma. This I pray in Jesus' name, and amen. Well, again, this is Mother's Day, and it's a day when we are supposed to be honoring our mothers. I would also throw in grandmothers. Now, in today's passage... As we read, uh, you saw that and heard that, King David is about to die. Now, before he does, though, he calls his son Solomon to come in to see him. David wants Solomon to become king when he dies. Now, King David tells his son Solomon how he wants him to live his life. He tells Solomon how he should rule over the people of Israel. And then the Bible says, King David dies. And true to his father's wishes, Solomon does become the new king over Israel. Unfortunately, though, David's oldest son, Adonijah, thought he should be the new king because that was the way it was normally done. The eldest 
reigning, the oldest son of the reigning king, whenever the king died, the older son normally would become the new king. And so Adonijah thinks, you know, I'm going to be king here as soon as dad dies. So Adonijah, when he finds out that Solomon instead gets to be the new king, he goes to Solomon's mother, whose name was Bathsheba, and he asks her to go speak to Solomon. He wants Abishag, the Shunammite, to be named as his wife. Abishag, if you don't know much about the Bible, was a very young, attractive Hebrew woman who was sent to comfort King David in his old age. In other words, she would lie there in bed to keep the aging king warm at night. Now, here's some important part of this. Asking for Abishag was Adonijah's first plan of action designed to take the throne away from Solomon. Unfortunately, though, Bathsheba agrees to take this request to her son, King Solomon. When she goes in to speak to Solomon, you notice, as it said in verse 19, he greets her by bowing down and setting up a throne for her. And notice again in verse 19 where Solomon places his mother's throne. It's on his right side. Friends, throughout the scriptures, the Bible clearly shows us many, many times that the right side was always considered a special place of honor. Now, in this Mother's Day message today, I'm not going to deal with Solomon's answer. All that we need to see for now, I believe, is first of all, the king of Israel had just now been anointed. Secondly, his mother made a request to him. And third, she came to him. Those are the important points right now. Forget about that other part of what Solomon is asked by his half-brother, Adonijah. Solomon, it says in the scriptures, rises up and has another throne set beside him. And Solomon asks her to sit again at his right hand, a place of honor. So in effect here, King Solomon says, I want to give my mother a special place of honor. I want her to have a place at my right hand. And I want to honor my dear mother. Now, though Solomon wanted to honor his mother, we know if you read the Bible or if you know very much about the story of King Solomon, you know that he, his life did not honor her. The Bible tells us that from that day forward, Solomon walked away from God. He did not honor his mother. Now, friends, here's the interesting thing about Scripture. The Bible never tries to hide or cover up the defects of the people we read about in the Bible that we often consider heroes, okay? It tells us about their faults. Now, the Bible clearly tells us that God gave Solomon great wisdom and blessed him with spiritual and physical blessings. However, unfortunately, the Bible tells us that King Solomon married many pagan wives. He dishonored God by building high places for his heathen wives to use for worship of false gods. Kings of Israel, friends, were commanded by God never to gather to themselves wives, wealth, and weapons. Well, unfortunately, King Solomon gathered all three for himself. He had hundreds, hundreds of wives. Friends, I have no doubt God would have been pleased had Solomon had only one wife. But instead, he chose to have, are you ready for this, to have 700 wives, 
Not only that, he had 300 concubines. Clearly, a violation of what God wanted the kings of Israel to have. Not only that, God gave him great wealth, but Solomon became greedy and he gained even greater riches. God blessed Solomon with a great army for Israel, but Solomon wanted to gather even greater weapons. 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 4 through 13 says this about King Solomon's latter years. For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and did not fully follow the Lord, as did his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. And he did likewise for all his foreign wives who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. And then in verse 9, So the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have done this and have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days for the sake of your father David. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away the whole kingdom. I will give one tribute to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. Okay, so that tells us what happened to King Solomon. Even though his father, King David, had told him to always walk with the Lord, Solomon, even though he had a great wisdom, <laughs> he walked away from the Lord. But that's aside now. Let's put that aside, okay? You can kind of remember that, if you will, but that's not what we're going to focus on here on this Mother's Day. Let's consider, first of all, the gift that King Solomon gave to his mother. He gave her, as I said a few minutes ago, a throne. And where was it? Right next to him on his right side. He gave her a throne of honor. This is Mother's Day again, and many, many mothers throughout the world will receive gifts today from their children, and maybe even from their grandchildren. Well, you can't do that if your mother has already passed away. So that presents a question. Is there a way that you can honor your mother now, whether she is still living or whether, in fact, she is dead? And I believe the Bible gives us some guidelines here on how to bring honor to our mothers. Are you ready for that? All right. Point number one, to bring honor to our mothers, know and do the will of God. Did you get that? To bring honor to our mothers, know and do the will of God. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7, God's word says this, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I made him. And then Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Did you get that last part? That we should walk in them. Let me ask you this question. Why did God choose to create you in your mother's womb? What do you believe is the purpose for your existence here on this earth? Friends, the Bible says 
that we are here to do the will of God. Isaiah 43, verse 7, makes it clear that we were created, we were formed in the womb, and we, all of us, every single one of us, were made for God's glory. People who have never been saved need to get saved because they were created, even though they're not saved right now, they were created by God to walk in His ways. And you need to be saved if you've never been saved. When you were born, your mom had a wonderful plan for your life. I'm sure that that's true for most babies who are born into this world. The mother has hopes and dreams for that child. After all, she carried you in her womb for nine months. She struggled in pain to give you birth. Then, after you were born, she changed your dirty diapers. She put clothes on you. She bathed you. She fed you. She loved you. And then you grew up and you moved out on your own. What if you never got saved and died and ended up in hell? Friends, I know that's not what your mother had in mind, no matter how she might have raised you. People who are saved need to try to do God's will and not their own. Point number two, to bring honor to our mothers, learn and do the work of God. To bring honor to our mothers, learn and do the work of God. Now, my mother is in heaven right now. She's in with, in with the Savior whom she loved. And though she lived not far from my home, I have to be honest and confess that I probably did not go to see her as often as I should have. Now, I did talk to her on the phone from time to time, and I believe she was comforted in knowing that I was not out drinking and getting drunk or doing drugs or bringing and becoming a dishonorable person. She knew that I was serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, though, you don't have to be a preacher to be doing God's works. If you are a born-again Christian, the Holy Spirit within you, friend, will tell you what work God wants you to be doing for Him. And I can say this without any hesitation. By doing the work of God, friend, you will honor your mom. Now, in closing, again, how can you honor your mom on Mother's Day? Well, it's probably too late to send her a card right now. Well, maybe not. Maybe if you put it in the mailbox today, she'll get it tomorrow. B better to be late than never. Or you can uh, send a flower. There might still be some flower shops open. Probably not, but you could still send her a flower tomorrow. But there's one thing you could do. You could give her a call and talk to her. But how can you honor your mom for all of eternity? Well, as I've tried to point out in this message, do God's will, first of all, if you're not saved, by getting saved. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today. Do not allow your mother's child to end up in hell. That would not be what your mother wants you to experience. Your mother wants you to experience the glories of heaven and life everlasting. Do God's work by serving the Lord all the time and with all your heart. Those are ways, my friends, I say you can honor your mom on Mother's Day. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for the opportunity to come each week here on Gospel Preaching with these messages. Today's message has been for the moms. 
The next week, Lord, I'm going to get back into the, what the Bible says in the book of Revelation as to what's going to happen in the end of times. What's going to happen here on this earth after the rapture takes place? And I pray, Lord, that the people who are watching this today will make a special effort to watch again next week to find out exactly the truth of what God's Word says is coming up in the future ahead. This I pray in Jesus' name, and amen. Well, thank you for watching Gospel Preaching today. The wonderful thing about doing these sermons here on, on the Internet is it goes out all over the world. Friends, I'm getting uh, emails from people on the other side of the world. People in Africa are watching. I assume some of them are missionaries over in Africa who are watching these messages. People in Europe and in Asia all over the world are watching these messages, gospel preaching, as it goes out on Facebook and on YouTube. And I thank the Lord for this opportunity that he gave to me after I gave up preaching at a church in Bone Gap. Hopefully, I'll have the opportunity to come next week and resume that study on what it says in the book of Revelation. Hope you'll make plans to watch when we come to you next week. In the meantime, my prayer is that God will richly bless you.